Former U.S. Ambassador to Myanmar, Derek Mitchell, joins me now from Washington. He's also the president of the National Democratic Institute. Ambassador, thanks so much for joining us. Obviously, you spent a lot of time uh, in Myanmar as you watch what's happening on the streets now. Uh, what do you make of these protests? Well, I mean, it's steadily escalated there. It doesn't surprise me that people were going to push back. These are very proud people. It's a very... Um, you know, strong and and thoughtful. A lot of young people in the streets. It's encouraging. It's inspiring. But it also, I think, fills you with some dread if you know what happens in in Burmese history. That the street demonstrations have, uh, have led to violence, and I really pray that it doesn't happen again. But um, it is. Uh, I think it's inevitable that people will be pushing back against this this coup that I think touches the hearts of everyone. What is China's role in all of this, and particularly in the aftermath, in what happens next? I mean, I know that the generals, and the, Myanmar, the Myanmar generals and the Chinese are not natural bed partners, but right. what kind of leverage does, does China have right now going forward as well? Well, they have leverage in the sense that they have enormous business interests and uh, a lot of investment uh, there. But as you say, the generals don't particularly like the Chinese. They don't like any external influence on their internal affairs. Again, they're very, very proud. Um, but when it comes, they could not have some leverage if they chose to use it. It would be wonderful if there were an ability for the U.S. and China to work together uh, on something like this. But the Chinese see uh, Myanmar, Burma as their sphere of influence. They don't want um, the United States, any Western power anywhere near uh, their border or having much influence there. They talk about not being involved in internal affairs. Of course, they do get involved in internal affairs. But uh, sometimes they see these things as an opportunity because there'll be alienation from the democratic countries in the world. That means um, that the military would have to turn to China. Uh, to support it internationally, and that gives China enormous leverage. So they may see an opportunity, but they're, I'm sure they're watching very closely given their historically bad relationship with the military and the good relationship that they had formed with the NLD, Aung San Suu Kyi's party. Are there any lessons learned from the past that the U.S. in particular, the Biden administration, should not repeat? How, how should they deal with what is going on? We've had tweets from the, um, the, the, the embassy on the ground. We've obviously had some response. What, what next there? Well, I don't know about lessons learned. I think we want to make, distinguish between the people of the country and those who perpetrated this, the military. I think there is a, a recognition that the old days of sanctions, which were blanket sanctions that isolated the country, uh, that that may not be the best way to go now that you really want to target this carefully, but not hurt the economy or hurt the people. I think that's a very strong lesson that many have taken. Uh, I think also engagement is very, very important, that we have, in fact, established a very uh, a record of engagement in the past 10 years. Um, and even though we've been alienated since the Rohingya crisis, that it's important to find ways to re-engage, to find a way potentially to get to the commander in chief. It's very hard at this point. But uh, work with allies, work with partners like Japan and others to see if we can find a way uh, to get to the commander in chief to turn uh, from this course he's on before it's too late. Uh, so many, I, I know that many people who have watched this will agree with you that they would prefer targeted sanctions, not blanket sanctions. Another criticism, perhaps, of American policy was too much of a focus on Aung San Suu Kyi, on one person, one leader. H how important is it to look at these protests or the opposition as more broad? Oh, you absolutely have to, and we always did. Um, I mean, we had relations as we could even before the opening and certainly after the opening when I was ambassador, first the envoy, then ambassador. We had uh, very strong relations with civil society, with the media, with uh, political parties across the spectrum. Uh, we just didn't have that ability in the old days because we were, it was uh, just a junta and we were, they were isolating themselves and we isolated them further with sanctions. Uh, the reason why there was such an attention on Aung San Suu Kyi was maybe twofold. One is she's a charismatic figure. She represents the democratic hope of the country. And it, it created a lot of attention to the country because she was the representative, the symbol of it. But also the people have chosen her. I mean, it wasn't simply about her, who she was. She was, in 1990, head of the party that won in a landslide election. In 2015, head of the party and a politician that won in a landslide in the same last November. So she represents democracy. The people have chosen her. Therefore, we must invest in the people's choice. But it can't be about her, as you say, uh, just her.
and has to be everyone and invest in the future because she won't be around forever. A uh, former ambassador, U.S. ambassador to Myanmar, really appreciate you joining me, Derek Mitchell there. Thanks so much for your perspective. Thank you, Robin. Thanks for the opportunity.